Thank you. I'm going to begin with, with a moment of silence for the following. <clears throat> Patrick Riley, a graduate of North Syracuse Central School District, and Cynthia Lewandowski, a graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna begin with a presentation on the district communications audit. And who's who's doing that presentation? Our, our presentation, ah. Alyssa All right. Taraburi. Oh, from Capital Region BOCES, okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, hi everyone. Ooh. Nice to meet you. My name is Alyssa Terraberry. Uh, I'm an assistant program manager with Capital Region BOCES, uh, and I had the pleasure of leading um, our communication audit team that conducted an audit for North Syracuse Central School District. Um, today, uh, I'm going to go over the, the contents of the communication audit report. Um, key themes and findings, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, what's in the report and how the district can move forward. Um, but first, I just want to begin uh, by by going over what is a communications audit for, for those who are listening and those who aren't aware. Um, a Capital Region BOCES communications audit is a comprehensive assessment of a district's communication practices and their effectiveness. Uh, the audit process is very involved. We, we started um, for North Syracuse in the fall. Uh, it takes roughly six months to complete. And the final product is a uh, lengthy report that analyzes the effectiveness of the district's communication efforts and provides recommendations for improvement. Uh, for North Syracuse, the recommendations in this report are based on findings from a community survey, uh, focus groups, um, with the sampling of representatives from the entire school community, um, a public survey, oh, I'm sorry, I said that already, interviews with administrators and the district's pub public information officer, Lori Cook, uh, and a thorough review of the district's website, social media, uh, printed publications, communication protocols, and media coverage. Today, I'm gonna to go over our findings and the key themes for improvement. But before I begin, I just wanna preface by saying our recommendations are based on a mix of public sentiment and um, our objective findings based off of our experience in our field. We aim to collect a mix of quantitative and qualitative data uh, to combine hard facts and feelings to produce a well-rounded report that captures a moment in time. Um, that has our considerations and suggestions. Is the sound okay? Sorry, I'm just, <laughs> um, okay. So the report, which I believe most of you have spent some time reviewing is lengthy. Uh, we have its contents grouped into various sections to make the information more digestible, but the meat and the potatoes of the report are the recommendations and action items. Um, I'll talk more about this in the slide, but I just want to preface, I encourage you to think of our recommendations like a goal statement and the action items below it are the strategies and tactics that the district can use as checkpoints to, to meet that goal. Um, the recommendations and action items in the report are listed in suggested order of priority, but the district can choose to implement different recommendations at different times. Some of them can be implemented immediately. Um, while others might take several years. It's a long-term effort and um, communication components will need to be introduced when the district's ready. Uh, that might be when budget allows, when resources allows, um, when staff capacity allow. I'd also like to state that the recommendations and action items for the most part are not something that can easily be crossed off the list. They require strategy, um, dedication to see the tasks through, evaluate as needed, um, and more importantly, they need to be executed with unity across the entire cabinet. Um, we have complete confidence in Lori Cook, the district's public information officer. Um, many of the recommendations that you have in the report um, 
were on Lori's radar, are on Lori's radar, are on the radar of the board and the cabinet. It's my understanding that some of the stuff in the report is nothing new, nothing surprising to you. Um, and uh, I, I say that because I have the complete confidence in Lori and the rest of the team to take the contents of this report and turn key it and apply it in a way that's best for the for the district. Um, there are things to consider in the report that I might not be privy to, such as vacation times, other initiatives that might be in the works. So I just say that before we get into you know, the meat of this uh, presentation. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about reading this report. Um, like I said, there's lots of different components to the report to make it easier to read. Um, so the executive summary, those are general takeaways and themes that we dive deeper into. Uh, there's a very important section here where I say that, you know, action items can be implemented right away. Others might take a while. Uh, basically what I just said earlier, um, the principles for effective communication and public engagement. These are guideposts that I hold near and dear. Uh, they're overarching principles that are critical to effective engagement um, effective communication and public engagement. Um, I, I think this is a handy, helpful resource that I encourage Lori and the administrators to, to print out, hang on their bulletin board, reference often um, when working on any sort of district communications. The recommendations and action items, these are the meat and potatoes that I referenced earlier, the, the goals and the checkpoints to achieve them. Um, the appendices. We have several appendix items. I want you to think of this section as uh, where we show our work. Uh, this is where we have the analytics from the survey, a summary of the feedback that we collected um, from the interviews and the focus groups and our analysis from our website and social media review. We conducted a SWOT analysis that examines the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to the district's communications program. Um, I'm going to provide an overview of that right now. The strengths. Uh, the North Syracuse uh, staff and schools are viewed as caring. The community members value the superintendent. They described him as a great listener who's attuned to the needs of the school community. Um, across the board, generally speaking, everyone we spoke to said that they feel like the district is moving in a positive direction, increasing transparency. Uh, they were very happy that they were conducting this audit. Um, Similarly, Lori Cook got a lot of accolades. She is a trusted source of information inside the district and with the school community. Uh, more strength, the district has developed a variety of communication channels uh, to share information with staff, parents and guardians, community members. In general, most participants feel informed about district events. Um, Principal newsletters are appreciated when they offer useful and timely information of value to those in the school community. Uh, generally speaking, the district moves quickly to share information with staff and students and caregivers and guardians and members of the, the, the school community. And the district has created opportunities for stakeholders to have a seat at the decision-making table. All right, now I'm gonna talk about weaknesses. Uh, the district was widely characterized as a disconnected set of schools rather than a united entity. Um, across the focus groups and interviews, we heard words like um, disorganized, uncoordinated, lacking in consistency. Um, those were the, the phrases and words used to describe the district's communication practices um, across the school buildings. So frequency, uh, um, amount of information in those um, communications, um, things like that. And this was noted internally, so staff meetings, emails, memos, things like that, and externally, uh, letters to home, newsletters, parent score messages. <clears throat> uh, at the time of the audit, the district's mass notification system, Parent Square, wasn't well known. Um, and so we have recommendations in there uh, to, to increase the marketing, uh, to kind of go back and make sure that, you know, everyone knows how it's working, uh, follow up with more FAQs, uh, you know, hold staff informational sessions. Um, Parent Square is a really awesome modern platform for, for family engagement. Um, but, you know, there's a chance that the district isn't using it to its fullest potential um, because staff members indicated that 
you know, they were never provided with enough training. Um, and on the flip side, parents and guardians that we spoke to said they don't really know how to use the tool. There's some confusion about do I use Parent Square to contact a teacher? Should I email them? Um, so there's just kind of like the, the mannerisms of how to use the mass notification system. Like I said, this was at the start of the school year. This was in the fall. So I'm not sure what the district has done uh, to, to remedy that thus far. Um, while the district does offer many communication channels, they don't appear to reach um, stakeholders that have children or who don't have children in the district any longer uh, or who do not speak English. We got a couple of comments about that. Um, crisis communication could be improved to make sure that the cascade of information is shared timely and with accuracy. Um, again, at the time of this uh, audit, at the time of our public conversations, we heard that there was difficulty viewing the live streams of, uh, of um, board meetings. So that may have uh, damaged some stakeholders' trust in the board's commitment to transparency. Again, I'm not sure. I'm hoping that we have this fixed. I, I see that I'm in a meeting right now or live stream right now. Okay, so opportunities, this is the, the good stuff. Um, Ms. Cook, Lori is seen as a, a valuable member of the school community, um, but it was noted internally and externally that North Syracuse is just much too large for one single communication specialist. Uh, enhancing the district's communication program with additional staff would give the district the opportunity to be a bit more proactive and strategic rather than responding to day-to-day to -day issues as they arrive or as they emerge, I'm sorry, um, concentrating more communications duties with the communications office would help ensure that the district's website is kept up to date, that the flow of information at the school building level is equitable. Um, uh, currently, coverage amongst buildings is a bit uneven. Uh, redesigning the district's website would give the district an opportunity to ensure that the site is easy to navigate, accessible to individuals with disabilities or who don't speak English. Um, I recommend that school and district newsletters um, undergo an evaluation and an overhaul. Uh, participants said that the newsletters across the district are of uneven quality. Um, the principal said that there are no district expectations or guidelines about what is to be included. And uh, parents and guardians said that sometimes the frequency feels arbitrary and that sometimes the newsletter is filled with, you know, fluff. So I encourage the district to just review those, review the frequency, review the content. Um, you know, if there's nothing to say, you know, you don't have to send a newsletter just for the sake of sending a newsletter. In general, streamlining school-to-home -home communications between teachers and families could help parents and guardians understand uh, what to expect and alleviate the frustration of having to get acquainted with all of these various platforms. So like I said, Parent Square, when do I use Parent Square? When do I use email? What should I expect from this newsletter? What should I expect from this newsletter? Um, and now I'm gonna move on to talk about the threats, the threats to the, the communications program. Uh, a big one for me was uh, there's a lack of consistency in, in how the website is controlled, which creates a threat to the, the, the consistency, the efficiency, and the accuracy of the district's online communications and the branding of the, the, the website. Uh, right now, there are over 10 web authors um, who have access to the district's website um, on a stipend. Those folks have different levels of web ability among you know among each other um and what we are seeing is that it, it it lends itself to that inconsistency of coverage one school district might have a lot of news about a certain topic in a certain type of way with this many pictures and then on the flip side another school doesn't really have that much and parents and community members can compare and they can say hey why does this school district have this and mine doesn't Okay, so uh, general observations and takeaways. Again, I'm still not yet into the, the recommendations yet, um, but my, my general takeaways are that the district should streamline and standardize communications across the building and make sure that everyone from administrators to department chairs to faculty and staff know the role that they play in communication efforts and ensure that that 
trickle down to parents, gardens, students, community members um, is accurate and that we're keeping everyone informed. Uh, everything needs to start at the top and expand outward to make sure that, you know, the entire school community is pleased. Um, in general, the district would benefit from regularly examining these communications. Um, the audit, you know, this is something that should be revisited again and again, and the audit is just, you know, a first step, but um, constantly evaluating and making sure that the district's communication efforts are, you know, convenient, provided in a way that's accessible to everyone, um, pushed, not searched. This is a big one. Uh, you want your communications to go directly to the school community. You don't want them to have to dig and try to find things, um, especially on the website, like news items. Um, personalized, not standardized. So information should be appropriate and applicable to whom you are sending it. Um, so for, for example, something that you send to a staff member will not be the same as what you send to a parent, or it shouldn't be. It should not be a one-size-fits-all communication because sometimes staff members just need to know a little bit more and parents have certain questions and certain things that need to be answered. So uh, we're not a fan of you know one-size-fits-all um, communications. Um, timely, uh, produced or the realization of busyness. Um, this is a big one. I think about this with the newsletters um, and that comment about it, you know, being arbitrary or the content not being very helpful or fluffy. Uh, communication should be concise uh, to the point um, and produced with a frequency that's relevant to, to the audience's need. So in the audit, I talk a bit about, you know, putting yourself in the, the recipient's shoes. Um, you know, is this parent going to be able to sit down and read this thing? Or are they, you know, scrolling and, and reading something as they're packing lunches, things like that. Um, so that's, that's the theme throughout the report. It's just, you know, stop, reevaluate, and make some, some tweaks that will have a big impact. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm at the recommendations. Um, there are nine recommendations in the audit report. And like I said, each of those nine recommendations have action items below it. So they're organized 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. I'm going to talk um, broadly about each of those recommendations and what you can expect to see in the audit report. And then at the end, I'm happy to answer uh, you know, more questions um, about things that are specific. So, okay, the first recommendation, um, again, I list these in my personal priority, uh, my personal preference, uh, but you can take it as you will. Uh, my first recommendation is to, to strengthen the communications program with uh, professional expertise. So I believe, we believe that the primary responsibility for district communications should reside with a professionally staffed communications office. Um, the work of the communications office should absolutely be informed by the board strategies, the board's goals, the cabinet's goals, the cabinet strategies. Um, but, you know, there's something special about someone who's, you know, trained in communications and PR. They can take the board's vision and the administrator's vision, and they can turn this into a communications plan um, that is, you know, strategic, has measurable objectives, um, and is in line and ladders back to, you know, what the board or the district wants. Um, so in this section, I talk a lot about um, communications planning. Every year we encourage uh, our client districts to make a communications plan um, that outlines the communications priorities for the years and how that ladders back to, say, the board's goal or mission or vision. Um, in this section, we talk about ways to position the communications office as the main hub for support, assisting administrators with their communication related tasks. Um, what I, what I found in talking with administrators is that, um, they take that responsibility on for themselves sometimes and, uh, a couple of very lovely, nice people said that, you know, they don't often contact Lori because they don't want to bother her. So again, the district is large um, and everyone is seeing that. So, you know, the principals want to do their part and they want to communicate, um, you know, without bothering Lori. But what I encourage is, you know, please bother Lori. And now the district has, um, since the audit, uh, the district has purchased um, some additional communication support from Capital Region BOCES. So now you have Lori and you have two other um, 
of my colleagues, Aubrey and Sarah, who can also assist with communications. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh no. Don't panic. Sorry about that. Uh, habit to click. Okay, so my second recommendation uh, improve internal communications. Um, I believe in fixing things internally before you fix the external. Um, effective communication starts at the top in any organization. The school district is no different. Um, in a district the size of North Syracuse, it's really important that the district leaders and the communicators lay out a set of clear expectations so that the entire administrative team um, has a, an accountability component, uh, that everyone is in agreement of how things flow um, and so that parents no matter what school district or what school building their child goes to they can expect a very similar communications experience um, in this section i talk about um, considering that communication expectations are articulated in writing um, distributed and discussed with all administrators so that there's no question about what an administrator's responsibility is when they communicate with faculty and staff uh, i talk about ways to address inconsistencies in the communications across the school buildings uh, the importance of updating faculty and staff with news and information before sharing that with the wider school community uh, the importance of being authentic with shared decisions decision making, um, seeking to gather a stronger sampling of stakeholder representatives and considerations, um, and uh, adjusting the content and frequency of the newsletters so they're not overwhelming. My third recommendation is to improve um, external communications, so the, the, the communications that are going out to parents and guardians, caregivers, community members. Um, in this set of recommendations and action items, I talk about ways to improve that communication. There's a lot of talk about evaluating what's currently being sent out, what's working well, what's not working well, expanding opportunities for more dialogue, uh, more transparency, and uh, more outreach efforts to non-English speaking families. In this section, I talk about frameworks for effective and reliable communication methods from administrators to teachers, teachers to caregivers. <clears throat> uh, the fourth recommendation communicate the rationale behind decisions to all stakeholders. So um, you, you know this, trust is earned by communicating the rationale behind decisions and reporting the full honest outcomes of all issues and projects um, and, and communicating that, pushing it, pushing it out to them, you know, making sure it's not hidden, making sure it's not something that, you know, they have to seek out. Um, so while the district does strive to make good decisions on the behalf of the school community, negative perceptions and misunderstandings can emerge if not all not all information is shared. Um, I don't want you to just think about crisis situations when I say this. This is this is just a general, um, you know, communications rule of thumb is to you know share what you know, acknowledge what you don't, um, and indicate what you are you know seeking to find out. Um, I know that there are instances where, for example, a crisis or a sensitive situation, a district can only share so much. Um, my suggestion is not to like fuel the rumor mill in any way. Um, it's just me sharing, you know, it's good practice to, to share what you know, acknowledge what you don't, um, and to say things clearly. Um, I talk in this section about cutting back on, you know, education jargon um, and speaking plainly where possible. The next recommendation um, and action items are about strengthening the district's message and brand. Um, I talk about ways to ensure that the district's logo, fonts, and colors are consistently used by everyone in the school community. Um, of the varying use of logos and fonts and colors can send a messy message, um, so enforcing standards is a good idea. Um, in this section, I talk more about communicating with words that are familiar to your audience. Um, so, you know, not heavy on the educational jargon where possible and using clear direct language just to ensure that your messages are being understood. Uh, and then my sixth recommendation is to improve the district's website. This is a lengthy section. Um, 
I talk about all the ways the district could improve the website's functionality, the usability, the accessibility for all visitors. Uh, we had a website specialist review every page of the website. So we have some very specific suggestions to improve different areas. Uh, we took a deep dive into various links and um, pages. So that, that, that section of the report is very lengthy. Um, seventh recommendation, improve, review and improve the crisis communication materials. Um, it's our understanding the district has general guidelines for communicating and responding to a crisis, but in this section, we just talk about ways to, to tweak and improve, right? Um, we make suggestions to make that communications plan a little bit more detailed, uh, including templates and talking points. Um, we encourage the district to make crisis management a yearly activity for all administrators and staff. Um, and this section contains mostly best practices for communicating in a crisis that the district can consider and adopt as they see fit. Um, again, I have this listed in priority. So, um, improving the crisis materials um, from where I stand is just something that the district could chip away at. Um, it's not the biggest thing that you have to do. Uh, the district has a, a, a pretty great base for um, crisis communications. Uh, recommendations eight and nine deal with uh, social media practices and media relations. Again, it's at the bottom of the list because the social media practices, uh, the media relations are pretty solid. Um, and it's just not the most important thing to do right now, in my opinion. Um, these really just are suggestions to enhance or support the good work that's being done so far. Um, I, these are things though, if you wanna cross some things off the list, these are the easy wins. So if you, you look at this report and you wanna like, you know, eat the ugly frog first, uh, you know, update your social or your media plan. We did it. Um, before I open the floor to questions, I just wanna say again that many of the items in this audit report are elements that the district's aware of, um, currently working towards, um, I want to reiterate that this audit process began in late summer, early fall. So some of these findings are specific to that time period, uh, to, to things that were going on in the district at that point. Um, and some of the recommendations that you see in your report might already be in progress. Um, I just want to say I found the administrative uh, team, the whole cabinet to be very perspective. Um, nothing in this report was unexpected to them. And I just want to say that um, I, I'm really impressed by the district's openness and interest in my rec uh, recommendations um, and where we go from here. Um, you know, Aubrey, the two other communication specialists, this report is ready for them, ready for you to kind of turn key and implement as you as you see fit. Um, so this is likely the last that you'll hear from me. So I'm happy to answer questions uh, now. Um, I'm not going away forever and ever. So of course, if you want to get in touch with me again, I'm here. Um, but in general, from now on, I would defer to, to Lori with, you know, next steps. Turn the light on. I'm going to start with a kind of a general question. I mean, I, I saw a hard copy of a some of this where would the do we do we can we publish the full one on board docs or is that not something can't it's not on there now i just wonder how the board could get access to look at the the whole thing was i just looked at it okay well that answers that one uh, that might be what I was looking at, that I had a hard copy of something that was a summary also. So in your opinion, I mean, what's what's the board's role with something like this? You, see, you mentioned different pieces. We're going to be looking at this and chipping away at pieces. Yeah, I what would our role be. I would I would look at it and like highlight, you know, just start by highlighting the things that stand out to you, the things that are really important to you. Um, you know, the board and the cabinet they work together uh, to talk about you know goals and priorities for the school year, much like with your strategic plan. So I would just you know be communicative with your board and with, um, or I'm sorry, you are the board with your, <laughs> with your cabinet about, you know, what feels most important to you. Um, 
And then, you know, it's up to uh, Dan, I don't know if you want to jump in how the district plans on, you know, like updating. Um, if they, if they outline the priorities that, um, I mean, in, and you've made reference to the recommendations. So we'll look at some of the, 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 the tougher things first, because if those are the bigger issues, uh, we'll set those as our priorities moving forward. And then we'll provide you with feedback and updates uh, as we're making progress. I yeah, know that answers my question, so. Okay, other questions? Yes, and thank you for saying North Syracuse Central School yeah, System. You're welcome. Um, I'm cons I, I just wanna say, I wanna thank the administration for taking the initiative to push this through because um, it really looked at our district and where, we're, where we've been and where we're going. My concern is the focus groups. Um, the number of people that were involved in this. It, it to me, it's not a true indication um, when you're only looking at 15 faculty staff members. I guess my question to you is why the board was not part of um, as the stakeholders. Now I went in, I don't know if the other board members as community member and I filled out the survey, but I'm thinking that we should have been one of the focus groups. Uh, our feelings towards this um, this thing. So that's just me. Um, I'd ask the board, uh, this is more to the board now, and I'll be talking later in my other comments, is to read this very carefully. I am concerned about the students and what they have talked about. Please read it very carefully. Um, I love that they were very honest about things, um, especially crisis situations and how they're finding out about it. Um, so I ask you to do that. And then I will mention other things later, but I wanna thank you and your group. This is phenomenal. And like I said to you privately, let's look at our strengths. There are a lot of strengths in here that we have as a school district. You know, we have 7,600 students. We had the largest uh, enrollment uh, other than C city of Syracuse. And it is very difficult when you have um, 11 buildings and you're trying to communicate. I can tell you administration has really worked hard on this. Um, years ago, I was a teacher in my previous life. And if I got a student from Allen Road, they weren't on the same uh, thing as a kid at Cicero Al. That's all changed. Our two middle schools are working well together and there's a lot of good things happening. This is just gonna take it another step. So thank you. I do ask the board to look, I've been through it twice now. I plan to go through it again because there's some really important information in that. Thank okay. you. So now I'm lost because uh, I'm looking at the Friday letters. I know I read a blurb on this, but I did not see the whole report and I still can't, the 17th. So looking at previous districts you guys have oh. worked with on this, has the sample size, is it, was it smaller for us than it has in some other districts you guys have done? I mean, to Bob's point, as large as we are, some of these response groups were relatively small. So, you know, the the broad picture could be skewed here. Yeah, I agree. And that's why there's a there's a section in the report that talks about, you know, yeah. the sampling size when we do districts, this always tends to happen. Uh, we get a, a large amount of RSVPs. Um, we actually had a lot I, it was my personal decision to actually close the RSVPs on some of the public focus groups because we had um, so many folks RSVP to attend and we, those are small group conversations. So I like to make sure that I can you know see everyone. Um, and then unfortunately we had several no-shows and that focus group w was very small. Um, this does tend to happen, um, but I agree that I, I I was underwhelmed with with it, and I, and and we recognized that you know it wasn't representative of all of the school community members. Um, the people who attended uh, were very active in their conversations. They had a lot of great feedback, but I would have loved to have talked to to more and more people. Um, in hindsight. I think the timing of the focus groups, uh, I think it was like the end of November. I think it was like Thanksgiving time. It was parent teacher conference time. It was, it was a really busy time. Um, and you know, Lori and I, we could have done, we could have done better with that. Um, but that's not to say you 
the district, the communications office, you could have follow up focus groups. Um, you could ask the, the same questions again. You can ask different questions just to kind of um, assess improvement. Um, but to answer your question, in the other districts that I've audited, this always tends to happen. They fill out the survey, they mean to come to the focus group, and they don't. Um, and um, to, to your, your question, Rob, about why wasn't the board involved, uh, in our estimate for communications audits, we only do, we offer a certain amount of focus groups, and uh, we opted to, to have more community focus groups instead. And then I guess I like like Bob said we have a lot of strengths in this and and I commend Lori and administration on the amount of work that they have done with so few staff. And oh yeah, it's very a impressive. Massive amount of communication that needs to go out. And I, Parent Square was just getting introduced when when this started, and I think that has grown very successfully. People love it. Um, so uh, in terms of our opportunities, are they pretty standard in line with what you find in other locations? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I said this to Dan, it's just that the district is massive. So, you know, the the opportunities, the weaknesses that we noted, I feel like they're just magnified because the district is so large. There's so many. Um, the, you know, the focus groups weren't well attended, but the community survey, a lot of people shared their input. Um, this is a really invested community. Um, so I think you know, they just, they, they, they speak their, their, their opinion and they say what they want. And that's a great thing. Um, and not all school districts have that. Um, so that's why I try in the audit report to kind of take the good and the bad. And it's really not that bad, you know, but there's nothing in here that was just no, out of the box, no, different it, than what you said. No, absolutely school, not. So. Absolutely not. You are just like every school district, just <laughs> huge. <laughs> We're not that big. <laughs> Other questions? Now, I have comments, but they're they're just for my own self gratification. I found I found it, and now I know what I did. I saw the same presentation just said here, and I went all the way down and stopped at questions. Mm. Keep scrolling the mm. reports after that. This is Not back on my. Not on my. Okay. This is on my library here, so I have some work to do. In case anybody wanted to hear that, so I and I know this is familiar because I read it three weeks ago but I didn't keep going down the gotcha. slide that said questions because I assumed that was the end. Gotcha. So that's me. Um, other questions? Okay. How often do you recommend we do one of these? One of the audits? Um, so what I would do, what I would encourage if I were Lori, I would take you know, two to three recommendations from the audit report, the big rocks that you want to accomplish. And I would make a communications plan that kind of assesses what the, you know, what's going to be done when. And I would encourage Lori, and I talk about this in the report, um, revisiting that communication plan mid-year, end of year, and then writing a new one. As far as um, doing an entire audit all over again, um, I think that's really up to you. Maybe every couple of years, I have absolutely never, I've been, I've never um, had another district come back and say, do another one. You know, usually this kind of does the, has the tools for them to kind of do it in house. Um, it's nothing that I say, like, you need to call me again. Cause we're going to do this again. Um, I, I, I think, you know, from where I sit, you have all the tools that you need. You have a I have internal. Yes, absolutely. And like, you know, you could kind of pick and choose your own audit adventure from now on. You know, if you think we're pretty solid here um, or you want to check out internal things first and just focus on internal communications and then another time focus on, um, you know, external communications or a very specific something. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Melissa, yeah. any other school districts in the area have you worked on with, excuse me, with? And not in this area. Well, I'm on BOCES and on the county, so I'll be talking about this next week. <laughs> so maybe you'll get some more people. <laughs> That's great information. So thank you very much. Anything else? Sorry, I didn't get to like look all the way around. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm actually, I actually live in Pennsylvania. I'm downstate, I'm downstate. Oh, but yes, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're at the portion for public comment. I don't believe anybody signed up, but as always, we do welcome comments and questions from the public to be brought to us at this portion of the board meeting. And also, anytime you wanna communicate with the whole board, you can do that through our district clerk. 
and she'll make sure that we receive all that communication. Board committee reports. I will start with policy. I think we have an upcoming meeting. Yes, uh, in case you missed last week's uh, committee report, uh, our next policy committee meeting will be uh, next Tuesday, March 14th. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Crabtree, legislative, which both you and I were not, well, we missed, yeah. <laughs> Yep. But you can hear me, can't you? Yep. Um, so just a couple things. Um, you know, you didn't hear it last week when Paul wasn't here. So Paul has to hear it about universal meals. I am really <laughs> struggling with this. Um, so I know I want to thank Xavier for pushing me to, to do more. So um, there was a tweet sent out by Senator Mannion. Take it from someone who spent 28 years in the classroom. Every student needs proper nutrition to learn and succeed at school. The free school lunch, school, free school meals program is a serious in serious jeopardy. But I'll be fighting to keep it operational and fully funded in the state budget. So I think we're going to be a little tug of war between um, our representatives and Albany. Now, I've been in uh, contact with Susan Tabrizio, I think I mentioned this, who's a member of the Lansing Central School District. Her and I have been back and forth because she is very uh, involved. Uh, her son's gone to Albany and, and there was a group of people, you might know this, Paul, that went um, for this, representatives, kids and everything. Mm -hmm. She's very, and she just wanted to say that she thought our legislative committee is unbelievable because no other school district has this. Her school district doesn't. And that we should be really shouting this out, that we care about issues that are local, state, and federal. Um, so yes, there is a resolution that was written by uh, Ulster County, but it's too long, it's too lengthy, and um, Susan went to the New York School Boards Association. They don't want part of it. This really surprises me that our school board association doesn't want to participate in this. So today, I don't know if Jeremy was with Dan, but Jeremy Belfield, I've um, sent an email to him because he's very good in legislative things and see if he can help us. I truly feel this board needs to have a resolution that goes on not only to our state legislators, but to our um, federal legislature. Uh, can't, I, uh, well, can't school boards draft resolutions? Yes, like, isn't that part but of But I am not good at doing this. No, and, no, no, but but can we request to them that they draft a resolution for us? We, we put resolutions forth for the school board's convention, and then in the fall, it'll go to the floor of the delegates. Right, but but and that directs legislation to be written if by we're using them as a service for policies and things like policy. that. Like why why would they she be said unable, they will not I they, mean they I will have not draft campaign. something for I mean isn't that part of the service we're paying for? Let me talk. I think we're to talking the, about two different things. I yeah. can tell you that three hundred. We're talking about the the free lunches right now. That is in the school New York State School Board's legislative program. Right. It's in their folders. So right. That that is they are lobbying for that. Right. But I, if if we're talking about passing a local resolution at the school board level. They won't. So uh, let me talk to Derek at Central New York School Boards. That's tomorrow phone I'm, call. I'm, because, um, you know, we need to do something. I know Xavier's right. We can't let, let this go. So that's the legislative committee will be meeting in April. And I want to thank Don also for, um, I wasn't there, but I'm sure he went through the budget and there were questions and concerns. So it is a good committee. It's made up of four great board members. It's made up of students. Um, I was glad the student uh, uh, spoke last time about some concerns. And um, we got we even had a mother that was beginning labor, I believe, um, when we started the meeting. I'm like, 
Did she have her baby yet, do you know? <laughs> I mean, we're excited. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. So ju just uh, to piggyback on that, I did participate in a lobby day with New York State School Boards. I do have a folder for you. It's out in my car, but if you hang out, I'll grab it. And I did have a little insert that I put in there that was specifically the North Syracuse issues that I received from a Friday letter that Don and when Don and uh, Dan had met with Assemblyman Sturpey. Uh, but really, pretty much all of the legislative program of New York State School Boards was in line with what our issues were besides the lunch piece, which I will say this, other than and I'm not bad mouthing any of our legislators. Uh, Senator Mannion is is on top of this. I'm getting a vibe that uh, others are feeling that well, this is a federal government program, and they created it, and they need to fund it. And we already know that 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 is not going to happen. So we we're asking the state. So I was pleased to, pleased to see that in there, as well as pilot reform, and the impact of that on the tax cap was in their program. Uh, a big piece, which was in there, which we also had through the Central New York School Boards with uh, Dr. Timms. I always laugh when I say Dr. Timms because I've seen that presentation so many times, but he had some really great points on reforming the uh, foundation aid. And that is, uh, those are pieces that school boards is also taking a look at. Um, so I'm really hoping they can look at that. I did speak uh, specifically to uh, Assemblyman Sturpey about some common sense safety valves, uh, which he mentioned in our legislative meeting that hopefully they could put into that electric school bus legislation. Um, but, you know, that is uh, at this point moving forward, but uh, hopefully they will come and give us something reasonable because those timelines are creeping upon us quickly. That's all I have for now. So, yep, thank you. Nope. Superintendent's comments. Thank you. Um, on last Thursday, it was a rescheduled event. Senator Mannion uh, came to the high school to honor Kate Putman. Uh, she is absolutely outstanding, and she is on the national stage uh, with her abilities as far as in track and field. Um, and she is going to NC State, and she is as humble as she is good uh, on the on the on the track. And it seems like anything she does, she does extremely well. So she was honored. Um, our girls, unfortunately, were sectional finals runner-up. Uh, they lost to Liverpool uh, uh, the other night, but they had a wonderful season and played really hard. Um, on Saturday, we had two events, uh, Science Olympiad uh, at the junior high. We hosted about 17 other schools. Um, it was a busy day. Uh, Mr. Keegan and I were up early because the weather from Friday going into Saturday was touchy. Um, we did have two school districts pull out because of traveling, but the, the students had worked hard and uh, we cleared the parking lots and they were able to get here and they did well. Um, from uh, what I heard is we finished actually fourth um, something's being appealed um, uh, to so that we do finish fourth, but there was a there's a correction that's being looked into. But uh, Mr. Rice is on top of it. But it was a it was a wonderful event. And from there, I headed over to the high school for drumline because then we hosted uh, a number of schools throughout the state, and uh, they were performing very well. And uh, uh, that went off on Saturday, but weather was not an issue because that started at one o'clock. Um, and I just want to say that uh, I was in Albany uh, yesterday and earlier today. Um, that's the New York State Superintendents Conference. And I had the opportunity to see uh, seven students pr uh, basically speak to all of us in the audience. They were four fourth graders and then three sixth graders. And they were reciting um, excer excerpts from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And I thought about as a fourth grader or a sixth grader, there is no way I would have been up in front of that many people. They were outstanding and um, they did a wonderful job. So again, I kudos to the students nowadays and the more that we can get them to speak in front of people, uh, the better they will be in their future. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Bowles. Board of Education comments? Timer. Because it's gonna be long today. It is because I have a lot of concerns and 
I feel this is the time. This is why we have Board of Education comments. So I first want to start off with some sad news, and you saw it in the paper. Homer Gear, father of actor Richard Gear, uh, passed away at the age of 100. He lived for 70 years right across Taft Road on Fay Park Drive. I drove by today because I have so many memories with him and his beautiful wife, Doris. Um, his children went through the North Syracuse Central School District. Of course, Richard was in the King and I at North Syracuse, but I had the privilege of um, being the teacher here of fifth grade of, of his daughter. And uh, she was a lovely student and the mother. We had a great Laura and we had a great whatever. But his dedication, and I know Dan knows this, was with Meals on Wheels. He was one of the founders of this organization. We talk about food supply and there are so many people in our community. It, it could be Maddie Dale, we go to Brewerton, we go to Cicero. Um, there is uh, elderly people that do not get food and the Meals on Wheels. He would come in on a Friday morning when I worked and he'd go up to the girls and he starts, oh, what a beautiful day. He just made everybody happy. He was always positive. And he always supported North Syracuse Central Schools. He came here and voted every year or he voted absentee. Um, he was, I also had the privilege to be on um, the advisory career education. He believed uh, as an insurance, insurance agent that students should be involved in trades and stuff. And LEPV and himself had a great relation just a wonderful man. And I know we don't honor at the beginning, we don't honor people like this, but this gentleman was Mr. North Syracuse. He just, and I am so privileged to, and I look at that and that's how his smile uh, was. So I'm so saddened about that. Last month, I mentioned, or last month, last week, I mentioned the Hidden um, Opponent Club. I hope I said it right. And it's, a, it's not uh, Lyra, it's Michaela Mills. I want, because I do, I do like this group maybe to come and present to this board. Um, I've heard Hannah Boyle and Peter Gill. Those are the two that I've heard. I think this board and especially Terry would love to hear this group. They are so sincere. And yes, there is dress in sports, believe it or not. Okay, I know you were in sports, Jamie. There's, it's not all fun and games, you know? And, and Bob, so, just to comment, I think it's something that we should showcase and have that go beyond the district and talk to other districts. Yes. I think it's that, I will that be big and it, that Moses. important. Yep, I agree with you. You know, it's hidden. You know, that's it. We have hidden things that, um, that um, we, we need to really be proud of. And there are other things in all our schools, you know, not just the high school. I also had the opportunity for uh, to go to Allen Road and read on Thursday, read across America, you know, Dr. Seuss and all that. And, you know, kindergarten kids have the wonderful questions that asked me, you know, about myself and stuff. So it was one. All right, a couple things I'd like to bring out. I think Jason has done a marvelous job with redesigning our retirement. Um, a program. We have a special night. We'll see Carol this year. You know, it's after junior high. Jamie will get up and say wonderful things about you. I, I just think it's wonderful. I do feel we're missing one little thing, and that's a little gift. And I've given Jason something. Um, and it's not going to cost very much, you know. It's more like a certificate in a frame um, that I received as a BOCES member. And I just think it would be real easy. I know we have some money in our, in our because we're the ones sponsoring this, the Board of Education. I, I just think something a little, you know, we give them a little bag of gift, but something they can put on their stand. You know, I wipe mine off. I dust mine off that I got. But I, I feel that our staff needs just a little something, just a little something. And I've given it to Jason. Mr. President, I think we, it's time for a retreat. Um, I know we put it off again and so forth. And I think this retreat, Paul, I really would like you to put doodle out or whatever you do needs to be done. There are so many issues that we have not talked about as a board, Micron, our budget, facilities, audits, legislation. Um, 
you know, we've had some retreats and we've gone through for Amanda and some others what a board member does, but we really don't have the time at a board meeting to, um, to really um, discuss these things. And I don't think we have to get Mr. Cook or so, I think we can have pizza, wings, whatever. Um, we can break it up, but I think we really need to discuss some of these issues. And I'm leaving that up to you as, as president to, to um, and we'll invite Dan too. <laughs> Um, I'm here's some, you know here's a couple things and I don't want people throwing things at me but we did have a, a lady come last week we've had Karen Siemens I truly believe Board of Education we need a director of fine arts I know that the budget is being um, put together I know we're two point whatever million in the red but um, I, I feel that a director of fine arts will put our theater our bands, our art together, and we'll be more uh, united um, as we have our sports. If you look at this report, it says we're known for sports. And when our band wins number one in the state, we need to do a little bit more uh, for our music program and our art program. You know, those teachers up there, not just the high school, Go over to the junior high, go in the elementary schools, but they need some leadership. Um, and, and I just hope, um, I know Mark is right behind me on this one. Look at him smile. I know, and I'm sure other board members, I just hope that this might be the year that we decide to do this. All right, my last thing, and I will do this um, without touching executive um, committee or whatever we do afterwards, but I want to talk a little bit about student being on the Board of Education. Um, I can tell you on the legislative committee, um, we've always had some outstanding students, Michael Riccardi, Giorgio. Um, we've had outstanding students who, back before, Paul, you were on the board, um, we used to uh, visit Don was with us. Uh, his first meeting was really with John B. Francisco. I don't know if he remembers that. But we always had students with us, and we could talk all we want, but they listened to the students. And I remember, I think two years ago, we were just getting over COVID, and this young man played something, and I can't remember his name, I'm sorry, um, on the committee. And Al Sturpey said, um, what do you think about sports to the kid? He said, uh, do you think we should be uh, starting? Uh, the kid says, I think we should be starting. And within two weeks, sports came back. We had football in the spring and so forth. Kids make a difference. So Mr. Crabtree was approached, and I've been through this a million times, but I'm going to do it one more time. I was approached in July. It might have been before the uh, reorganization meeting from a student that is on uh, the legislative committee that Mr. Crabtree, I, I, I think it would be a good idea that you have a student to sit on the Board of Education. I believe at the same time, Mr. Bowl said that he had a young lady, he just said to just be ironic that a young lady came to him um, and stated that she th thought that maybe we should have somebody on this board. I, I think it's dragged on so long. It's, um, it, it's just unbelievable. And, and I wanna say, Mark, you've done the best uh, as a policy committee chair. You know, uh, your first year, I remember when I did it, it's not the easiest task because you have a great group of people with different ideas and so forth. And then, um, you know, when you only meet once a month, you really don't get to the nitty gritty, okay? And thank you for having a subcommittee, which Terry, I wish she was here tonight. Terry was really kind of the facilitator along with a student, a principal, myself and uh, a staff member. And I remember that first meeting uh, and we all had different ideas. And that's what our democracy is. And that's what a representative democracy is about. And I left there with a little headache, but I go, you know, Bob, they all have good ideas. You have to listen. We came back for a second meeting and I thought it was phenomenal. We talked about 
there's a difference between having a student as a member of the board and participating than having a group of students come, which I am all for, to present on hidden opponent clubs, on canteen. They're two separate things. And I thought it went well. I thought Terry's idea of having one, and I think of you, Xavier, as a mentor for this young person um, would be wonderful. This has gone on. Um, we're down to the deadline. Um, I believe, according to our um, according to our district clerk and her contacts with our law lawyers, I want to go in too much here, is that we don't need a policy right away. We need one, but we don't need it before we ask the taxpayers in May to vote for this. If we miss the deadline, we've lost another year, not just one year, we've lost two years. Also, someone said to me, what's the purpose of this? And that the purpose is we are a group of people that make decisions. And FM and West, I don't know if West Tennessee, Baldensville, look at me when I go to Bosis and say, you really? I said, yeah, there's just a lot of flack about it. Um, I feel it's in the best interest of this school district to have someone sitting over there that is a student. I would like to have more, but as Jill said, uh, we can only have one. So I want this board to think about this. I think we have to make the decision um, by March 20th. I hope it's the right decision. Thank you. Other board comments? Okay, then we'll move to routine action items and I'll ask for a motion for consideration approval of the minutes of the February 27th, 2003 meeting of the board. Motion from Mr. Marizio, second from Mr. Thorne. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Like a motion from B and C, the classification and placement of students in uh, special ed for home instruction and for school by the various committees. Motion from Mr. Moody Wuzik, second from Mr. Gru. Okay, items B and C are before us. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Okay, discussion action items. A, approval of the district calendar for 23-24. Motion to place that before us, please. Motion from Mr. Marizio, second from Mr. Gru. Calendar is before us. Any questions, discussion? I am so very happy that graduation is the week er earlier. Um, West Jenny's been doing it for years. Baldsville has been doing it. Look at Jamie, uh, been doing it for years. You know, these students, their seniors only have one regents and they really don't need that one regents. So I think this is an excellent calendar. I'm sure the teachers, sorry, Carol, you're not back don't have to come back to labor after labor day, <laughs> but um, it's an excellent calendar. And I, I just like the way graduation is. Okay, any other comments? Just a quick question uh, in case other board members are also curious. Uh, this is still in a draft state. Yep. And we can approve it in this draft state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then, but then we we probably will. I'm gonna guess we'll see two or three amendments because we usually do. But yeah. So yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good question though. What What was the question? I didn't hear it. You want, it's a draft. Is yeah. this once we approve it, it becomes the calendar Got until it. we amend it? Which I thought that's what he asked, but I didn't hear it all. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other questions, all in favor? Opposed. That is carried. Uh, item B, to amend the office personnel positions, uh, motion to put that before us from Mr. Marizio, second from Mr. Thorne. Okay, this was discussed in the Friday letter. Any questions about that piece? Yes, sir. Remember, not everybody that's listening gets a Friday letter. Right. Um, I'm concerned that House 2 is becoming um, a different civil service. Am I correct? In other words, 
the other secretaries are 12 months, right? Go on. Can you explain it, Jason? Can you grab a microphone, Jason? So uh, we had a retirement in house one and uh, house, well, house two, sorry. Yeah. And then the, the, the person that was moving in uh, actually requested to be changed from a 12 month employee to an 11 month employee. So basically we just did an internal massage where we flipped the 11 month and the 12 month position. So now that 12, it was an 11 month position and the vacancy became a 12 month position because it previously was an 11 month position that we were filling. They're asking to change that back to 11, from 12 month to 11 month to offset the cost of taking a typist two that does purchasing for the main office and make them 12 months because it's very difficult in August when we're ordering supplies and things for the beginning of the school year for them to get all that work done without the purchasing secretary in place. So we've worked with uh, we've worked with Jamie to try to find the best solution to meet all the needs of the building. If we hire the person for house two secretary? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I just have a concern. Yeah, it's going to save us money, I believe, right? It right. should be a, um, a, a very slight yeah. savings because okay. of the change in, in pay differential between those I, two. I types. just feel that the other secretaries at the, at the school, the different houses, will be different. So they're going to all, all going to be 11? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so resolution B is before us. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. C, to approve the special education administrator's title change. Motion placed that before us, Mr. Thorne, second, Mr. Moody Wuzik. Any discussion there? No, no. A million questions. I should have called Jason up. Um, my concern is, um, I understand why the change, but because um, I was here many moons ago, so I know why the change. But are we now having three directors of special ed? And why are we not having uh, a director of special ed and two assistants like other school districts? One of the reasons that we went away from the assistant director of special ed is we're having all of special ed directors report to an upper cabinet level person with those assistants within that same bargaining unit, they report and are evaluated by the, if you have assistants as a director. So it kind of had a, like a hierarchy piece. Um, this way they will all report outside of the internal directors. And right now they uh, report to uh, Dr. Leahy. Will they have different um... Duties. Job descriptions. They will have different duties assigned to them. Uh, right now, there's always been a person that's covered most of elementary, some that's done secondary. Um, and then there's a director that does a little bit more of, I'll say, oversight with certain grants and things like that. But their titles will all be the same. Jason, I don't know if you want to chime in if there's anything different. Yeah, really, the, the, the distribution of the responsibilities across our entire special ed program uh, will really largely be driven by the qualifications and the skill set of the people that we hire to bring in. So the actual work of, of making those determinations of who will do which specific tasks is something that we will be working with with the remaining director, uh, Julie Darmody latham um, as, as we bring and onboard the new folks. And Mr. Crabtree, I think what would uh, be a benefit to us by not having an assistant director title, you're going to get a better quality applicant. When you have certain assistant directors or things like that, you might get a, a lower tier person, maybe just starting out. But it's going to cost us more money. Uh, we're currently so you're going to have, you know, a director is kind of, you know, three directors in the same field. You know what I would like a director of fine arts, and now you're 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 I just I I kind of see what you want. I'll vote yes on it. I was going to vote no because. I just feel, but, but I, Mr. Craig, I, just don't, I we, don't understand. Sure. The, the, well, we I understand had, the title, but sure. I just. I'm, I can't tell you how many years we haven't had assistant directors as a title in there. 
but one of the things because you were here um yeah, one of the jobs was as executive and that really i i was here believe me when that happened. prior to that change this is what we had before where we had three not directors, directors. i believe we did, did years ago no no i i'll go along with it i'm not thrilled about it you're the superintendent i just feel i just don't believe in it but that's all right you're the superintendent i'll go along with it other comments what can do can we get clarification what it was before I, I thought it was three I know we had the exact I thought it was three and then they changed it like back so, so what ago. we have currently is an executive director of special right. ed and two directors of special ed or something and so um prior to that we had dropped down at one point to only two people within the department which is not manageable for a district our size. Um, but um, uh, if you go back a few years, there were two assistants or associate directors okay. and there was a director and they and they both reported to that director inside the department. Um, we had some things going on and there was a previous report from uh, John O'Neill uh, that was looking at special ed and then looking at other parts of the district. Um, but it really created a, kind of an issue uh, as far as having the assistant directors and directors. So a uh, decision was made to make everyone as a director with different duties assigned. And then uh, at one point, then someone was created an executive director, which is still in the same bargaining unit. So that caused a little bit of concern. So we're just trying to make okay. all the titles the same with different job duties. Okay, other comments, questions? Seen and all in favor, resolution C. Opposed, that is carried. We have D, a motion placed a marketable, non marketable surplus before us. Motion from Mr. Thorne, second from Mr. Marizio. Any discussion there? Seeing none, all in favor. Opposed, that is carried. Just like to take a moment to acknowledge two retirements that we have on tonight's agenda that will be in uh, the uh, reports for personnel that come up next. We have David Cordon, our middle school principal at Gillette Road, retiring with 22 years of service. And Mary Margaret Brown, English teacher, retiring with 28.3 years of service. So I wish them well and a happy, healthy, and long retirement. Motion, please, for instructional personnel report A to place that before us. Motion from Mr. Marizio, second from Mr. Moody Wuzik. Any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing that all in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you. Support staff personnel B, a motion, please. Motion from Ms. Grew, second from Mr. Thorne. That is before us. Discussion there. Seeing none, all in favor. Opposed, and that is carried. And administrative personnel report C, a motion, please, that before us. Motion from Mr. Moody Wuzik, second from Ms. Grew. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. Opposed. Thank you, that is carried. I will make a motion for executive session. I will ask for a second. The motion is to move into executive session for the purpose of reviewing one legal matter with no action to follow, three personnel matters with no action to follow, one parental appeal with action to follow. A second, please, Mr. Marizio, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. We are in executive session. So I adjourn, even though we have to readjourn. Motion no. to adjourn, Ms. Marizio. Second, Ms. Segru. Discussion. Because we have we'll have to readjourn though. That's what I was gonna do, but then somebody said adjourn. Motion is out ruled out of order. 